Hey everybody, this is George and oh my gosh, can you believe this is the end of the year? Literally the end of the year. December 31st, we've had some crazy stuff going on and in fact, uh, I stole Ben Verd's uh, title because, well, I thought it was just awesome. So the dirty data that drove a weird year in real estate. Well, that is so true. And there's a lot of different things that are going on and you know, it's it's super interesting. In fact, uh, a very dear friend of mine, Peter, uh, he you know he he made the comment uh, just moments ago. He says, you know, hey, you're doing a valiant job of uh, keeping a positive light on real estate. And uh, you know, in actuality, minus interest rates, you know, the real estate market is actually doing quite well. So we're going to go over both locally and nationally. We're going to take a look at a little bit of. Uh, what we call a little bit of reality. And then we're going to end with the, what the predictions are for next year. Now, remember, uh, the one key thing for you guys, hey, uh, smash that uh, subscribe button. Make sure that you're getting updated as, uh, as, you know, as we're doing these videos. There's no selling and it's perfectly free. And the key really at the end of the day is, well, having the most amount of information so you know all of your options is really the best well, it's the best practice, right? This way we make the best business decisions for our families. Anyway, there we go. Hey, so let's uh, let's have a little bit of fun here. We're going to start off with our local information. Uh, keep consistent with uh, with our uh, with what we do here. So we've got uh, we have our our chart here. So new listings. Now many people are like, uh, what do you mean new listings? Yeah, we're looking at the seven day average here. We have new listings. As you can see, 176 homes came on market. Uh, we had 518 that actually went pended, and then of course, 621 homes that sold. So for those of you that are sitting on the sidelines, just understand that our market doesn't come to a screeching halt. And in fact, these numbers are a little bit better than what we've been seeing you know, over, oh, I don't know, uh, over the last you know years, not last year, as we're going to see in the next chart, last year we only had 2,000 homes, and uh, you know, or about 3,000 homes actually. And you know, this year, uh, you know, we've got I think uh, just you know, shade over 9,000 homes, something like that. So our inventory is way up. However, we're still seeing some really great activity, and that is super important to understand because those of you that are sitting on the sidelines. Uh, in waiting for this market to crash and tumble and, and do all kinds of crazy things, you're going to be waiting a while, and uh, both nationally, and that's why we're bringing this up nationally and locally. Uh, it's, I think you guys are going to see a slightly different game out there. Anyway, all right, so let's move on. So uh, our next time, oh, wait a second, I'm going to come back here a second. I need to pop this back up. Uh, for the buyers, I said, hey, buyers, check this out. Hey, listen, uh, when, uh, one element that you should be looking at and something that we share with a number of our clients, for a seller that loses a buyer, home comes back on market, was pended, something failed, whether it was financing, whether it was, you know, whatever it was, right? There's a, there's a multitude of reasons as to why, okay? And it has to go back on market. What a great opportunity for, you know, buyers to re-engage with sellers, especially, you know, uh, buyers that are looking for that really good deal. Okay. Well, there's a great opportunity for you. And, you know, it, you know, homes like this come on market every single day. So keep that in mind. All right. Just saying. All right. Now, if we pop over and we take a look at uh, our next chart, and as you can see down here, uh, we actually have dropped in inventory. And we dropped uh, quite a bit in inventory. And, it, you know, like I say, we're about 9,000 different uh, homes that are available today. And, you know, last year at this time, there were 3,000. Okay, we have 3X, and so interest rates have doubled. So minus interest rates, really, the market is doing very well. And you might say, well, George, come on. In, you know, inventory's up, you know, almost 200%. It's like three times. I'm like, well, wait a second. I understand normally this time of year we have 12 to 15,000 homes in the Northwest MLS. Okay, well, that's still lower than what we historically have. And we have interest rates that are double where they were at last year. So, again, minus interest rates 
we are still seeing some pretty marketable activity. Really, at the end of the day, as you saw, as, as we pop back in here, you can see we're, our sales are only down 22%. 22% we doubled interest rates, 3x our inventory, but yet we're still seeing an appreciation in our market. Hmm. So make sure that when you are deciding what to do, again, having the information, all of the information, knowing your options uh, really does allow you to make a really good decision. And that's what we're looking at today. Because, again, if you're sitting on the sidelines, <laughs> stop. Get out there. Why? You have more inventory. You have greater flexibility with sellers. You can keep your contingencies to protect your earnest money. What more could you ask for? Right now, you can still get a great, well, it is the end of the year. And I said before, hey, go, go out and uh, get new construction. Why? Best pricing, best terms. They need to uh, report to shareholders, so make sure if you have an opportunity, get out there. All right, moving on. Okay, so when we take a look at uh, mortgage rates, uh, as you can see, we're about 6.42% today. And, uh, you know, all as always, 15-year financing is down uh, a little bit lower, less risk. And uh, non-owner occupied financing right now, uh, basically what we're looking at with uh, non-owner occupied, I believe is about 6.997%. It's bobbling around. And there's, uh, during the show here, we're gonna go through some really cool things. I'm gonna ramp up the speed a little bit uh, as we go through some of the, the metrics and whatnot so that as you get uh, uh, more information, again, you're gonna see, hey, you know, this is not that bad. All right, first of all, uh, month over month, uh, when the, you know, in the national news, I always talk about, uh, what's way behind us. So they're talking about October. So some of the stats you're saying month over month housing prices were flat in October. Eh, not surprising, right? Uh, purchase power in the middle uh, income household paychecks fell 2.9% in 2022. Uh, inflation hit the uh, middle earners harder than any other group. Not unexpected, right? Mortgage applications were down uh, just shy of 1%. Refinance apps were up 6% week over week. That's a little bit of a surprise. That came from the Mortgage Back uh, or Mortgage Broker Association. Uh, purchase, purchase apps were, again, just down um, just shy of 1%. Not unexpected for the time of year, but let's have a little bit of fun here. Let's, uh, let's head into our next slide, and uh, let's talk a little bit about some of these funny stats. All right, here we go. 35.4% on a national level, home prices plummeted. I just love the words that they use. All right, sales coming down, biggest impact, interest rates. Hands down, no doubt, interest rates were the, without a doubt, the, the biggest contributor to why we saw some of the changes in our market, right? Okay, when we come over here, 18,000 real estate uh, uh, layoffs, and uh, a lot of that, as you can see, uh, your Zillow, your Redfin, some of your other uh, what we call limited service organizations, uh, lending companies, um, there were massive layoffs with lenders, well, because they're not seeing all the, the uh, purchase money, and of course, refinance is uh, at an all-time historic low because of interest rates. So, you know, they've been uh, uh, dumping, uh, you know, basically loan processors and, and uh, whatnot because there's just not the demand. Well, that makes perfect sense. Uh, your limited service uh, companies probably taking the biggest hit. Why? Well, because if they're only, their only ability to attract you as a potential client uh, is to discount commissions, and that is their only skill level. But when things... Uh, when, when the market slows down and they don't have that ability or that ability is reduced because the buyers are uh, pulling away because of interest rates, again, the biggest contributor to the shift in our market, not necessarily a bad thing, okay? Uh, so beware out there. Make sure that you're interviewing that agent. Make sure that if they're discounting their commission to you right off the bat, you might want to reconsider. Because in a new market, you need 
you need negotiation skills. You need somebody who's really got, uh, you know, your family's best interest at heart and uh, not just trying to figure out how to get a transaction pumped through so they can get a paycheck at the end of the month. In other words, make sure that the agent that you're working with does not perceive you as a paycheck. That's typically what I like to say. Anyway, moving on. So uh, when we take a look at uh, our next slide here, uh, $888, 888. <laughs> that number, well, I guess it's better than the other number, two digits below. But anyway, that number is how much more it costs for you to own a house per month today versus it did uh, at the beginning of the year, even if we went back, you know, 12 months, right? But at the beginning of the year, that is what has changed. Again, interest rate has been that uh, driving factor. Uh, not unexpected, and we're going to go into a little bit more as to why we feel that's going to change. Uh, go back, check our, our prior shows, and you'll see that there is a consistent pattern there, and I think you'll find uh, well, some really great news. All right, let's move on to the next one. Let's see here. 8.4%. Uh, that's the magic number for rents that slow their roll. So you'll note that we had a high of year-over-year -year gains of 17.1%, uh, and now we've dropped down to 8.4%. Uh, note that that is still a positive. That doesn't mean they're coming down, okay? Uh, some units that they, you know, that were overpriced, you know, there's always going to be that adjustment, always going to be an adjustment, whether it's rental market, whether it's the products that you buy, you know, at the store or, you know, uh, you Beanie Babies, remember, they were just all crazy. And then, of course, they came back down again. Some of you going, what's that? What's that? What? <laughs> Beanie Baby. Anyway, don't ask me why that popped in my head. But nonetheless, still kind of the same thing. Everything uh, will find its its equilibrium, right? And with the rentals, they're still in an upward trend. They're just not double-digit upward trend, but still in an upward trend, just like our housing market. And in fact, let's hit the next slide. So our next slide... As we uh, pop in here, there we go. 10.1% growth. Had the uh, our, We peaked out at 20.1% in some market areas. Uh, on average, about 10.1%. Uh, we saw in our area uh, closer to about the 6 to 8%, depending on what market you're in. And again, that's still positive growth. Even if, and then, you know, it's so funny. Somebody said, George, well, what if the market goes down 3%? Well, holy smokes, we went up 33%. So if we come down 3%, you're still well above the market average. You're still doing incredibly well. And in fact, having the market slow down, having the, the inventory increase was a huge, huge safety net for everybody that purchased a home in the last three years. Without it out, the biggest safety net. And the reason is that it prevents that bubble. And because things have leveled out, because we have seen a more balanced market, which is a huge deal, that protects you, your investment, it protects your family, protects your equity. So it's not a bad thing. And it's just a mindset, right? And again, you know, Peter, you know, you're doing a valiant effort of keeping, you know, the, the positive light on the market you, because it is still a great market minus interest rates being higher, which, and you know, when we talk about higher interest rates are now, really where they are almost always between five and 7%, normally between the high fives, mid sixes. Well, that's where we're at. So that's normal. So yeah, they're higher than what they were last year, but it's still normal. So make sure that you maintain a true perspective because that's going to continue. We're going to see, as you'll see in, in one of the following slides here, you, we're going to see some, some interest rates come back down, but they're going to, they're going to level out in the high fives to, to mid sixes, normal interest rate. So just keep that in mind and capitalize on really your better market trends, which you're getting right now. All right, let's delve into this. Look at that, $173 million, the most expensive sale in 2022. You believe that? That must be a real shack. <laughs> Anyway, $173 million for all of those of you that are struggling to buy a house. There you go, $173 million. Crack up to that one. Anyway, that was a flip, by the way. <laughs> he sold it, I believe, in the same year or within a year. Bought it at $98 million, sold it at $173 million. That is probably the world record flip. 
I think that's a world record play. Anyway, uh, I have to always throw a little bit of fun in there. Let's move on to the next one. All right. Uh, let's see. 7.5%. That was our mortgage peak. Now, what's super important about this, when we take a look at what mortgages are doing, what the feds are doing, right? Uh, the feds are already talking about a little bit of a pivot, okay, in 2023. You know, they're not having the greatest amount of impact on the on the economy or on the inflation like they were hoping, but all things considered, you know, they're, they did slow things down because even though the feds do not control mortgage rates, they definitely have an impact. Remember the feds, that's your credit cards. That's your car payments. You know, the, the interest rate for cars, uh, what banks lend to each other on a daily basis. That's the fed rate. Now, if you watch bonds, 10-year treasury, things like that, those are things that you need to keep in mind as far as what we see, what we do, right? That's what does mortgage rates, long-term mortgage rates. Completely different. You need a different conversation? Nah, just let me know. All right, moving on to the next one. This house here, this cracks me up. 119,400 likes. It is the number one clicked, liked uh, picture uh, on the uh, Zillow Gone Wild, which absolutely cracks me up that I have no idea what is so awesome about that picture. I don't know. But anyway, had the greatest number of likes. And uh, so, again, just another little fun little tidbit to, to add. All right, let's get on to the next one here. All right, uh, 30 days on market, right? Uh, roughly about a 15% increase year over year, according to Redfin. Uh, the Seattle East Side markets and some of the surrounding areas a little bit lower than that, and about half. And so, all things considered, again, not something crazy. It's not like we went, you know, from seven days to ninety days on market, right? Uh, it's just one of those things. And we're talking about the average, and uh, so there are homes that are less, or some that are more. We are still seeing multiple offers in uh, a number of different areas based on price. And that is a big deal. And the nice thing is that uh, the sellers that are looking at and willing to consider going on market both now and probably between now and the first, uh, eh, let's go figure middle of February, those folks are definitely uh, going to be spot on. And hey, listen, uh, waiting to the spring market may not be the best idea because right now you have a massive, massive amount of buyers that are still looking. In fact, some of the homes that uh, that uh, you know that we've been uh, you know working with and checking buyer activity, it has been off the chart and shockingly up about 102 uh, percent. What we saw a year ago, looking at certain areas as far as inquiries and uh, in our statistics reports, super interesting, which tells me that people are out there, right, and looking. And of course, we're getting requested for. Uh, a number of market updates, uh, you know, so that they get an idea of, hey, where's where's my house valued on today's market? We do them for free and, uh, you know, whatnot. So feel free to drop your address in. If that's what you're looking for, we can fire that off to you. Include your email address. We can send it to you, although we can print it out for you also. Easy enough. All right. Uh, let's move on to the, to the next bit of uh, factoids here. Look at this. First American chief economist, Mark said, if mortgage rates fall to 6% by the end of 2023 and the nominal house prices actually decline by 0.3% annually, affordability as measured by the RHPI, that's Residential uh, Housing Price Index, will improve by 9%. Translation, if the interest rates come down to uh, into the sixes high fives, we're pretty close to there. Uh, when it falls into that and home prices adjust not by 1%, but by 0.3%, that's a nominal adjustment that the home buyers out there will have a 9% increase in uh, affordability. Affordability is really, without a doubt, again, tagged to uh, and tied to uh, interest rates. Affordability is what prevents a lot of your first time home buyers, a lot of buyers heading back into the market, uh, keeping them from being able to do what they want to do, you know, in the industry, uh, in the industry, meaning to buy and secure a home. Okay. Uh, lower interest rates creates activity. We already saw that, you know, in November and December, hands down, still a great, great 
uh, amount of activity that happened. All right, let's take a look at our next one here. Mortgage rates expected fall. Fannie Mae predicted uh, and a forecast by the uh, Mortgage Brokers Association said that, uh, and as you can see here, this is 2022 Q4, or, uh, fourth quarter. And as we start heading into 2023 and 2024, you can see that rates are definitely, in their prediction, coming in a downward trend. And that is absolutely everything that we are predicting. Uh, and you might remember that in Q1, we're going to see a, I think, an exceptional drop in interest rates that will be short lived. Uh, and, you know, which we will drop into, I think, the mid fives ish or so. You know, we will know more later. Anyway, that's our crystal ball. Uh, we, we buffed that bad boy up and uh, was looking at next year. And we'll go over those here in just a little bit. And uh, let's hit the next one here. All right, what do we have? Fannie Mae. Fannie Mae economists think that the 30-year fixed rate loans peaked at 6.6% uh, during the fourth quarter. will dip below 6% by the first quarter of next year. Well, guess what? That's what we just said. We've been saying that. Uh, we're starting to get some of the big industrial lenders uh, to uh, agree with us. I'm going to go with agree. They have a definitely. They definitely have a bigger head shed than we do. But uh, even if you go back to our 2007 stats and whatnot, uh, you'll you'll see that every we, we're pretty accurate. We keep a pretty tight, tight rein on this. Again, remember, subscribe. Make sure that you're you're uh, smashing that like button, right? Here, here we go. Let's hit that button for you. Uh, make sure that you're sharing this. If you know if someone is looking at buying or selling, look, this is free. If you like them, and even if you don't like them, send this information to them so that they can get real-time information. There you go. All right, let's move on. Okay, let's hit uh, this one here. Seattle hit the uh, financial uh, health index along with uh, the Bellevue and the East Side. Bellevue and the East Side actually uh, hit number eight for the region. So for those of you that are super concerned about our area because there's some um, – I'm going to say bad publicity out there. So some of the West Coast is absolutely tanking. It's horrible. It's dreadful. They're, you know, it's like it's like moving the deck chairs around on the Titanic in Seattle or the East Side. And as you can see, actually, uh, that is a false statement. And uh, we are and have a very good market. We are still plugging along. And uh, I, you know, all things considered, remember. If you're on the fence, get off the fence. Get out there. Make sure that uh, you're re-engaging as it's a, it's a great opportunity for you. All right, here we go. 2023 real estate market predictions. My predictions are that rates will actually go down uh, as low as 5% or in the 5 percentile. It is going to be short-lived. Uh, that's going to be towards the end of uh, Q1, and that's going to be based on some of the uh, – the reports that, uh, that the feds and everybody else use is, uh, I think we're going to see some positive numbers and that's going to drive down some rates. Uh, home appreciation, uh, we are not going to see the double digit, but I don't see us really going down. I still see us between four and 6%. My actual number is about 4.33. And that is the appreciation that I see us uh, in uh, 2023 as we head into 2024, 2024. It's a lot of twos is going to see, a, uh, I think, an increase in market activity as people start to balance out. Hey, look at that, talking about balancing out inventory. Inventory will continue to be a more at a more balanced level or more normal, predictable level that we have historically seen. Minus 2020 and 2021, which you have to, you kind of have to remove those from your head because they were such anomalous markets. Uh, when we go back, you know, all the years, uh, you'll see that our trends are very much spot on where we're at and interest rates will balance out to where they normally are, okay? Which uh, we will talk about. Buyers will acclimate to the normal mortgage rates. Normal. Not high. Normal. <laughs> and I think those will uh, balance between 5.75 to about 6.5. And, a half, and they'll, they'll, they'll balance in and out. And that's okay. The key thing is to understand that as as you uh, progress, as you in your mindset start preparing, whether it's buying or selling, you're going to start to see that the, the market is balancing. We're going to be acclimating. 
Uh, we're going to have our moments of fury, uh, and then it will taper back down again. So 2023, relatively flat market. Don't expect much. This year, we've had some very, very interesting, crazy market cycles. It's uh, been super interesting. But anyway, in the meantime, you guys have an absolutely beautiful day. Happy New Year. Enjoy the last day of uh, 2022. It is December 31st, which is awesome. Anyway, you guys have a great day, and I will see you on the next video. Take care.